Hello and welcome to the Spirit Box podcast. This week I'm joined by Marco Visconti and Lonnie Scott for the first of our Trialogue series. Now the reason I've asked both these guests to to appear on this uh, this episode is their knowledge of Hellier. Marco uh, has previously appeared on the podcast and spoken about the Star Sapphire, the, the Thelemic ritual um, that is mentioned at the end of Hellier and his thoughts on what was happening in Hellier. And of course, Lonnie Scott is the hypnotist who did the uh, hypnotism experiments in Series 2. So I'm delighted to have them both on board. We talk synchronicities, we talk hyper sigils, we talk the nature of ultra-terrestrials, who is Terry Wrist. And um, I had my own synchronicity while recording this. You'll hear... You'll hear my phone go off in, towards the end of the recording because that's the level of professionalism we have on Spirit Box. And, uh, but the thing is, just as, it went off, as I was, just as it went off in the recording as I was editing, my phone went off exactly at the same time. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of weirdness, especially for me. And if you listen back just over the last 15, 20 seconds, you'll hear the tiny dink of my other phone going off. Um, Yet another Hellier special makes the hair on the back of your neck go up. Anyway, in the show notes below, you'll find a link to Marco Visconti's lecture on Hellier coming up on June the 12th, which he mentions in the show. And you'll also find a link through to Lonnie Scott's radio show, uh, The Weird Web Radio. Be sure to subscribe to Lonnie's show. It's absolutely brilliant. He has some tremendous guests, exceptional, particularly recently. All right, that's enough from me. On with the show. Lonnie, Marco, welcome to you both. This is the first Spirit Box Trilogue, and I'm delighted to have you both here, and I've asked you both for a specific reason, and that reason is Hellier. I think you both offer uh, an interesting perspective on, on the show, and, and through various different um, synchronicities and, and interesting turn of events, we find ourselves all here on this, on this uh, show. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind, I'll ask you to quickly introduce yourselves. If, uh, Marco, if you just quickly give us two minutes. Sure. Um, well, my name is Marco Visconti, and um, I've been a practicing magician, <laughs> or occultist, for most of my life. Um, I'm a telemite, uh, amongst other things, but let's say I um, mostly rec- um, recognize myself as a telemite. I, I accept the Book of the Law, uh, and I accept the Law of Telema. And... Uh, I came across Hellier, but because one of the one of the the the, the, girl, the women that came to my course in at, at Treadwell's books, uh, now two years ago, uh, we became good friends. Elise, hello Elise, and uh, and she was actually uh, posting on Facebook in December, last December, how good Hellier was, and the fact that they were talking about the Book of the Law and Alan Greenfield, which is a person that I know. And I was like, what, hey, what, hey, how, how is this becoming uh, mainstream out of sudden? You know, Amazon Prime is speaking about this. So, you know, I went in, um, you know, down the rabbit hole as all of us, I suppose. And, uh, and I, I discovered, I mean, I went on to personal research and I think I discovered an interesting leitmotif that connects all the dots for the Hellier mystery. We discussed this on, the pod, on, on, on this podcast before, mm-hmm. and I'm very happy to be back. So thank you very much for inviting me back. My pleasure. And Lonnie, a first time guest, and hopefully we'll get you back as well. Um, you're very welcome to Spirit Box. And if you could let the good people know uh, a little bit of your background. Sure, thank you. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Um, as some of your listeners may know, I'm the host of Weird Web Radio, a paranormal and occult podcast, because you yourself have recently been a guest. Uh, it's how Thank we you. got to know each other. And um, for me personally, I am, I've been a practicing occultist, I guess is the best overall umbrella term for nearly 30 years now. It kind of breaks my heart to think it's been that long because yeah. <laughs> I'm getting that old, I guess. Um, I mean, in my defense, I took it up pretty young. Uh, if you want the down and dirty title, uh, you, the best way I could sum it up is I'm a chaonomist heathen sorcerer. Uh, influences from uh, various really great teachers over the years and 
you know, I'm a professional hypnotist and I have been for 11 years now and unprofessionally, I guess, act, amateurly, I've been studying and practicing hypnosis and working with trance and the ways that those uh, techniques can access inner and outer worlds in a, in a way uh, for the entirety of time I've been practicing some form of the occult. This was where I first encountered these ideas anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I got involved with Hellier because of being a hypnotist in a roundabout way. I was a writer for Greg and Dana when they had the Who Forded website. I wrote a couple articles that they carried over to their website, Weak and Weird, when they left that Who Forded format. <clears throat> and in 2012, yeah, Greg and I came up with an idea when they were filming the Planet Weird series uh, to conduct the alien abduction experiment that is in episode seven of yeah. Hellier season mm -hmm. two. And then um, fast forward through time concerning Hellier, he gets, he sends me an email one day. I see the subject line that says, Hey, you want to get weird again? And <laughs> <laughs> I go, I go read in the email. And basically we've, we've come up with a plan to see if we could hypnotize someone, send them into a trance state and access wider areas of what I call the field, you know, just the, that more mystical web vast connection that we all are a part of mm -hmm. and see if they can contact uh, some sort of spirit contact or ally and bring back information that is actionable, that is actually relevant to the case. Okay. And those are the experiments I conducted in episode nine. Well, that was my first talking point. Really, I thought it was a good way to orientate um, some of our listeners who, who may not be familiar with Hellier. I mean, I've spoken about it enough now on the podcast, mm -hmm. one would hope they're uh, reasonably uh, au fait with it. But just to get people up to speed, can you talk through your experiments on the show? So you, you touched a little bit about what you were trying to achieve, but um, like, Talk us through that the process. What were you What were you looking for? Which experiment exactly do you want me to discuss? The the, the broader hypnosis ones. Go go through with it, whatever you think. <laughs> I mean, uh, the first experiment was from 2012, and it's an older experiment with the alien abduction scenario. Right. And honestly, I came to that project because you for that because um, through the power of suggestion even in simply interviewing someone as shown mm -hmm. through the satanic panic era, mm -hmm. um, you can plant false memories in someone's mind pretty easily. Right. And, and most of mankind is under this naive notion that your memory is a perfect recorder of events, feelings, and emotions. And it's simply not true. Um, and there's tons of studies out there to prove it. If you want to dig into it, the, the right. science is there for it. Um, I mean, when they were if, looking if I can for, interject here for a second. I mean, you sure. you, you mentioned, you know, the satanic panic, the sat Satan ritual abuse, though that that proved that, you know, the people that remembered this abuse, they they never went through it. They, they, those memories right. were implanted by other, you know, psychiatrists, well, you know, maybe psychologists that want that they basically wanted to sell books about it. It's quite right. quite horrible when you look about it. So sorry for the interjection, but it's, yeah, it it's the mistaking the way they handle language when they're interviewing people, and it's it's so easy, especially in a younger mind, mm -hmm. to implant these these false memories just by just by the way you word the the questions. You can lead someone down that road. Um. So. With that, the Planet Weird, they were interviewing different types of people. They were going to set up different types of events. They were like interviewed a guy who was a vampire. They were doing Bigfoot research. They were doing all kinds of different stuff. And it was going to, and it, it was a really great idea. But the thing with the UFOs, particularly in alien abduction, in conversation with Greg, it comes up at some point. I, I can look back on all the hypnosis regression sessions of, alien abductions I, and I've yet to see one to prove me wrong and I can show you where the hypnotist planted the details and the ideas in the, the subject's head mm -hmm. thereby my argument planting false memories <laughs> yeah. so I wanted to illustrate just how easy it is to do that mm -hmm. but in the process too uh, I have this occult mind and practice and what happens in the world of the imaginal and in trance uh, can sometimes 
create that signal or that sign to attract entities or spirits or something from within your own subconscious that's more powerful to to, to make it more real, I guess, mm -hmm. in a way. So was Jason abducted by aliens when I <laughs> put him through that session? Absolutely not. Uh, I'll argue till the cows come home that he was absolutely not uh, abducted by aliens we did not uncover some hidden experience in his life i thoroughly interviewed everyone before we even did the experiment but did he have an experience that was real well sure um think of a lemon if you're listening to this and imagine that i've given you a slice of that lemon and now you take that lemon to your mouth take a big bite out of that lemon and taste the lemon juices as they hit your tongue and mm -hmm. feel saliva begin to build in your mouth and your cheeks start to tighten as your brain makes it real because ultimately it doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined and what's imagined is more real than what we even give it credit for anyway. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's at the heart of the alien abduction experience. I mean, this is, this is fascinating for me to, to listen to you speak about this because I mean, that is what, you know, in magical practice we call path working, like precisely mm -hmm. that, you know, like having guided path working, basically having, you know, a circle, where people, you know, go into a meditative state, which is a light trance by all means. When Absolutely. You start, you know, when you start, you know, concentrating on your breath, concentrating on, on you know, on the stillness of your body, body you're, you, you go into a light trance state. And then maybe you hear somebody speaking of, you know, opening the gates of Malkut and going to, into your soul, you know, to, to use the, the tree of life, life as a map of reality, which is some of you, I mean, I discussed this before on this podcast. Like, I, that's my go-to map of reality. But that's exactly what you say, like you implant ideas for the, the people that are receiving the experience in order to see these vistas, right? What happens there, what I found out happens there is that if you do it in a very, you know, repeated and controlled environment, it is possible that some, some external thoughts start coming in, which, which is something that I really hope that, you know, the hellier crew picked it up, but I don't know mm -hmm. if they did so far <laughs> pretty much because, <laughs> because it was like... Uh, I mean, that, that's, that's all the point of all the cipher as well. I mean, I guess, but at some point, we're, we're already going beyond what Dara wanted us to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> right? it, it, it's good stuff. I'll, I'll interject if, if I need to keep it on course, but this is good stuff. And I think we're, we're, we're starting to cut across po uh, points, talking points anyway that, that, that I've listed out. But, but to, to that point of, 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 of um, keeping, keeping the conversation going, um, what I'd like to ask you about is to get your thought on the synchronistic element of Hellier mm -hmm. and what do you think is going on there? And why is it, why is it a catalyst for synchronicities? Why do we, well, you know, there's so many people that I've spoken to about who watched Hellier and they come out of it and they go, I was, you know, I'm, I'm having a weird reaction to this. I'm noticing things I didn't notice before. Is it a suggestion as, as, as you've alluded to, you know, already, Laurie, that is, is, is this having an effect on people where actually it's making people suggestible? Um, or maybe, are we maybe it's both the maybe it's both things at the same time, no, right? I mean, that, that's how magic works, really. It's there's always ma magic. There's always an element of again planting the idea of the possibility of magic, and then it almost starts to snowball and cascade, and, and things start to happen because because it's, all, it's memetics, right? It feeds itself. Um, if I can answer your question, I mean, this um, um, address this talking point. What I personally believe is that around 2012, on a, from a magical standpoint, something did happen, which, is, which wasn't the end, of, the end of the world, or was it? Maybe it was you know, like the end of the world as we knew it up until yeah. that point. Um, I don't have any, as I, something that I always like, um, like to say as a prologue whenever I speak about magic is that I never pretend to that what I say is scientifically provable because magic it's another way we interact with the, the world around us, another way we try to make sense of the world around us. There can be some levels of, of interlapping where you know you can see why magic works, you know, from a scientific standpoint. But overall, most of the time, whenever you see people trying to go in, and maybe Lonnie disagrees with me, you can tell me, but maybe whenever people th starts to say thing and say, oh no, you know, magic works because it's quantum physics, really. And I was like, no, it's not. We don't know what quantum physics really is. <laughs> We're still modeling it. So I think that's, it's more than I think, you know, if you've been working with, with magic, you, you have seen 
the world around us changing in the last now what eight years now. Now time does fly, <laughs> mm -hmm. and 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 you know to know that uh, Dana and Greg received the, the first David M. Christie around that time to me it's something like you know the, a message from this so-called ultra terrestrial, which is this term that I really like uh, and we used before. Uh, maybe that was one of the first seed being planted. And then it cascaded, then it started snowballing again and again. Also remember that, I mean, Hellier, first season of Hellier came out, you know, what, in like over a year ago? And I didn't know about it. It's only when, you know, a bigger network, like Amazon Prime picked it up, then really like was catapulted into everybody's mind. And that's how, you know, means, you know, which you know, it's not just like funny little image, but it's, it's language virusy, viruses that they, they get <laughs> transmitted around. And magic, all, ma magic is mimetics, like 100%. Like think about not only the idea of the ideas through magic, but also like magical formula, abrahadabra. Like you say that and immediately everybody thinks of something twinkling happening, some magical stuff happening. Now, of course, as a telemite, you go and look the the, you, you see, Abra had habra, and you start to all find all the reasons why that formula encapsulate um, a magic of change. But then th th that's on top, right? It's just like the twinkling that happens in magic immediately. So what's been happening? I feel that we are we are living in a transitional period, and Hellier is a symptom, as it says on the on the on the on the on the, on the emails. Um, it's it's also how you address it. Like if you go if you go look for little goblins in caves, which I personally be, believe being like the wrong approach, or if you start to look at the bigger picture and trying to understand what is the message, mm -hmm. what is being said, who says it, and how do we speak with them? Because to, to me, this this these entities, this this intelligence, this consciousness, they have been talking like loudly, you know. Uh, but I feel that. After, you know, now what, seven months of me looking into this, six months, uh, I see that more people are more interested into going into caves and find little goblins. I don't think they'll find them. <laughs> well, I, don't think, I don't think they'll find a little green man anywhere because they, they, there's something else, you know? Well, it's interesting that you say that. Um, just before I pass this over to you, Lonnie, it's interesting you say that because, you know, one of the, the kind of resounding memes of, kind of, I guess, people who are into Hellier is that, you know, the T-shirt and the stickers with, like, no goblins, one star. <laughs> You know, which uh, I love, by the way. Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's a hilarious joke, but it's also the truth. It's like there's no goblins. Yeah, you don't look for them because you're looking at the wrong, long path. You know, you know. Do you know what I mean? Like we're we're on getting to it. You you might sorry. Go back to you, Marco. There you you um you took an, an inhalation of breath, which was like, hmm, I'm not sure you're right there, Dara. Go 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 for it. Go for it. <laughs> no, no, it's about you know like. What are the goblins? Mm. The, 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 there's something else to me. To me, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, maybe because I, I've seen strange creatures, but I, I, they weren't, they, were, they weren't really, yeah. they weren't like physical creatures. They were more like constructs of the mind. Right. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. Back to you, <laughs> Lonnie. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, synchronicities were kind of at the heart of the question, and I. I mean, I grew up a big fan of Robert Anton Wilson, so uh, the idea of synchronicities is well planted in my mind. Uh, <laughs> if if anyone out there needs something to crack their head open to really begin to get an idea of strange shit in the world, read Cosmic Trigger Volume 1. Yep. I promise it will crack that lid open real well. Um, so, you know, earlier I brought up the concept of the field, and the field is a, is a general term put forth by Aidan Walker in his book Six Ways that captures the ideas of, you know, the web that connects everything, the, tr the, the world tree that holds all worlds and all possibilities, the well at the foot of the tree in heathen cosmology that holds all that is, all that was, ever will be, flows, you know, it, various cosmologies and mythologies through the world have some concept that says we are all connected by some uh, force that we can tap into, right? So my working theory is uh, the moment you set your intention in a magical way, work magic, call on a spirit, act in some magical fashion, uh, it's, it's turning a light on at that particular section of the field. It's putting, it's putting a beacon on your back that says, I'm now open for business. And as you do that, you're just going to begin to create these 
effects that flow around you that are attracted to you. So if you begin to investigate, for instance, for instance, um, Indrid cold, you're going to start to see a lot more signals and clues for Indrid cold. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you decide to, uh, well, as as a, a recent example in my life, I decided to go back to join the the organization, the ADF, which is a large Druid fellowship, neo-pagan organization. Not so much because that's just the way I practice. It's because I think they're the best chance at a pagan church and it's consistent everywhere. And it's kind of my participating in that and helping it grow. The day I decide to go back and pay some money and be, become a member of this, I go out to eat later at a restaurant with my family and park in front of a car that the license plate says Druid 98, which is the first <laughs> which is the first year I joined ADF way back wow. in the day, right? So it's, you get these little <laughs> hat tips that you can take them either, you know, and Connor said this and Hellier too, that you can take them as a signal, like a clue, or, or they're just kind of generally noise. And it, it's up to you on how you'll investigate those further. You can mm -hmm. lend more merit to a synchronicity by chasing it down that rabbit hole. And mm -hmm. believe me, if you've been in the occult for any any period of time, you know just how deep that rabbit hole can go. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you've had the grand mystery revealed to you either. <laughs> that's that's the that's the tricky part of navigating synchronicities and things like that. So what do I think's going on? I think um, I think when Carl Pfeiffer got his hands on that email and had his synchronous events happen. Uh, for him, it was important enough to pursue Greg and Dana into creating a film and uh, a real investigation and, and project out of this. Mm -hmm. And as it unfolded, uh, that all that will and that focus and that intent uh, continues to open more doors for them to keep to keep further going down that rabbit hole. I guess what remains to be seen is how if this is just a deep rabbit hole or if they really are having something important revealed to them because mm -hmm. i mean in in the other the other sphere of people that i like to follow their work and friends of mine who are doing their own investigations uh catherine heath and morgan daimler um they they're really and i think they're right and maybe it's just because of the lens through i view the world that uh this isn't about goblins and caves this is about the fae and the others you know on that level who are becoming much more interactive with, with our realm in whatever way they do so. Yep. And be yes, just, we agree. And just to jump in there, uh, Marco, Lonnie was uh, very kind enough to, to give me a, a steer to reach out to Morgan. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we recorded uh, an episode, which will go out this, this week, last week, if you're listening. Um, and it was remarkable. And some of the synergies that we hit on between gin lore and fairy lore uh, were, were really eye openers to the point where we both were kind of going, you know, wow, you know, <laughs> where, you know, she had no idea the depth and the synchronicities, synchronicities of gin lore in relation to, to, to fairy lore. And, and she, and she gave, gave me kind of three, links that i was not aware of at all on fairy lore that just basically is it's almost like for like but it's one of those things where you start to unpack it and you look at it and it's how this thing this consciousness this intelligence interacts with people is it's in some way it's using the cultural language lenses. They, could, yeah. it's, they use the cultural lenses of the people hmm. that receive the message 100%. i mean we it's funny because um in many ways, for me, I, I remember when I first realized this, and it was like my, my, the, the first like first five years that I was into you know initiation and occultism and magic. And for me, it was like oh, because you know I grew up fascinated by fairy lore. You know, I mean Italian. I never cared about you know Minerva or you know Apollo or Jove. You know, Italian Roman gods. I was always into the Celtic gods. Uh, and Egyptian gods, of course, because that's what was uh, And I was like, you know, so I grew up with those stories. And then I remember reading Peter Colosimo, which was a 70s author, Italian author with an, that was 
writing about you know the high, you know, high strangers, right? So uh, alien abduction, mysterious earth. And I was like, oh, but wait a second, this is the same story. This is like, well, they're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, being abducted and going somewhere and coming back maybe with different memories. That's the same story. And then you realize that when you go into and work with magic and when you work with, you know, contacting angels, contacting demons, contacting gods, uh, that's the same story again, because, you know, they, they, come, they come into your world, they whip you out, they bring you somewhere else. Maybe just your consciousness is brought someone else, somewhere else, but it does. And when you come back, you have, you know, time has skipped or you come back, you know, completely changed. It's the same story. It changed the cultural lenses. I would say that maybe for, from an occultist, a magician standpoint, what changes is also the agency, because usually magicians go and look for that. Pretty much like, you know, what Lonnie did with trying to, you know, set up an alien, an, an alien abduction. Like when I was looking at on Hellier, I was like, this is, this is really like, you know, casting a circle and trying to have, you know, the scryer receive the message of the, receive the experience, you know? Um, and that's the same thing. I mean, it, there's difference there, but th there's an element of agency, like the magician goes and look for this. For me, this is especially interesting because this is the bread and butter, butter of Telema. That's it, you know, there's always been the idea that in Telema, which is considered to be, if you want to believe in Telema, of course, and if you want to accept the idea of the rece reception of the new eon, Telema is the last operating system of magic. Imagine that you have like over the course of, uh, of the centuries, you have magic constantly, constantly updates itself, and you had you know Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry and uh, and uh, the Golden Dawn, and now you have Telema. And in Telema, it's all about you know the Book of the Law was received by an ultra-terrestrial intelligence that is like a, an an other uh, intelligence. It could be seen as a as a jinn. Ivas could be seen as a jinn, as a fairy that comes along, sends a message. Most people don't know that Crowley went and looked actively to have more of this experience, and he did. So Ivas is one, but there's, a, there's like Abu Dis, there's Amalantra, there's Alam. There's our, there are other yeah. intelligence that seeped into the dynamic milieu and have, and have sent new messages. That's why, again, as, a, as, as, a, as somebody who's, who's never really like, never really followed, you know, high strangeness TV, when I was looking, uh, watching earlier, and I, heard, I was hearing all this influence of Telema, and of course, you know, the, the use of the cipher, which we could discuss how good or bad that is. And I was like, wow, what are these guys picking up? I mean, how, how is this becoming mainstream? Because, I mean, it's been there you know, for a while. Well, that leads me on to my next talking point, because um, I think we, we've, in, in respective conversations with we, we, both of you, we um, bandied around the ideas of, is it an initiation, or is it a hyper sigil, or is it both? So I want to open that up. Lonnie, can I throw it your way? Sure. Uh, before I get into that, uh, something that Marco brought up was like, for instance, how Crowley was contacting Iowas and, mm -hmm. and these other spirits and having these things dictated to him and that the actual nature of that entity is always up for debate. Um, the second set of experiments that I conducted in Hellier were more along those lines. They were different than what I did with the alien abduction. Okay. When, when I hypnotized, I hypnotized both Carl and Connor, Connor, the footage with Connor didn't make it into the show for whatever yeah. reason. Um, I'm, I'm sure time edits bonus material and everything else besides, um, he had a really interesting experience. Carl had a very interesting experience. Um, unfortunately, a lot of that's also not shared. And the, the, the basic principle was I, sh I was there to teach them how to enter a trance state once in the trance state to go to a place that they, they can access, you know, inner knowledge things that they may have forgotten things they may have lost it's basically a doorway to their subconscious mind yeah once i feel they're properly there i tell them a new door has appeared whether it's a ladder up a ladder down an elevator a grand archway whatever has whatever form it takes there's a new door that's appeared and when you go out of that door you're now accessing the wider field you're no longer just playing in your mind and when you get to that area the wider field the darkness envelops you. You call out to your allies for one, for a specific reason, because they're looking for 
uh, information that applies specifically to their investigation in their case. And some interesting things came out. I didn't know what my, they might say because when I conducted those experiments, I was left in the dark. They didn't tell me what they were chasing down, what they'd come up with for season two. They just kept saying, you're gonna be blown away, you're gonna be surprised. Uh, we had a long conversation about what I thought about gatekeepers, liminal spaces, and so on. And uh, you know, it turns out I was suspecting a lot of things that they might find. Um, so I, I just wanted to speak to the, the experiments in episode nine are very much in line with trying to contact some outer in entity, some outer mm -hmm. intelligence is not part of you and your inner world to get real information that you can go into the world and prove that you've got real contact. If that makes sense. <laughs> it does, it does, yeah, it does make perfect sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, to get to your, what was the question that we were going to cover on this well, part? I've rambled so long, I forgot. I know. So it, was, it, was <laughs> um, it was around the idea of initiation and high precision. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Hellier is, and not by intention, I think it's, it's hypersigil more, more than initiation. I, I say that in, in all means of respect, but I've been through initiations. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been through Coven's organizations um, the, and in different specific magical training that I've had and orders I've been part of. Uh, I've, I've been through various initiations. I have engineered in initiations for my own students. I know what initiations look and feel like in that realm. And this doesn't look like that to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not, I'm not part of that core group either. So I can't speak to the inner tor turmoil and the, the real challenges and things that they're going through other than what they share with us on film. If they say they think they're going through an initiation, I'm gonna take them at their value and, and, and say that if, if you feel like you are, then you must be going through some sort of ordeal. Um, Greg and Dana, Carl, Connor, I mean, these are, these are people with unquestionable integrity. If they say something, they're not trying to manipulate you or lie to you in any way. There, there's some of the people out there that I absolutely trust. Um, that said, I, it's a hyper sigil. <laughs> it just looks and feels like a hyper sigil, the same way Grant Morrison made the Invisibles to be a hyper sigil. Um, it just this unfolding of a story that is going to rewrite the consciousness and the way we connect with the world around us in the deeper field. And anyone that views that is, it's just like I was talking about cosmic trigger earlier. They've added something else to the, the, the library of high strangers mm -hmm. that will crack your lid open to have those deeper experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, def I definitely concur with you. Um, again, um, I don't, I don't know Greg and Dana or Carl or Connor. I spoke with Greg over email briefly, uh, but, and over Facebook. But that's it. That's all the connections I have. And he, I'm with you. He, he seems an ab absolutely, you know, top-notch person. Like, you know, he, he, he seems like he, very genuine. So if he says that they feel like they're going through this initiation, I, I'll, I'll take us at face value, you know. Mm -hmm. it, the, the term you use, ordeal, since, I mean, since I, I do, I, I went to several initiation. I engineered several initiations for others. Ordeal seems more like it, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's also true that, you know, since they also have this, they also have, they're, they, they're, they're the herald, the heralds of, of, the, of the hellier phenomena, right? So they, they, they're the ones who inter, in, you know, interact with the wider community. Maybe the term initiation, it's easier to digest than hyper sigil for a lot of people. So when they speak of it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's easier for, for their, uh, their audience to understand the concept of initiation as, as opposed to hyper sigil. I, I spoke about the, the, the similarities between Hellier and, um, I mean, both uh, Grant Morrison in the 90s and Robert Anton Wilson even before, you know, from with yes. the Hattos trilogy. It feels like this hyper sigil since the 70s, you know, keeps re reverberating itself or across 20 years, more or less, trying to, you know, to beam out the message, beam out the message. And every time, you know, at first it was books with, with Robert Anton Wilson. Then it became graphic novels and comics at, at the height 
of the comic craze in the 90s. Now it's uh, bing bingeable uh, TV shows. So it's like the, the most effective medium every time in order for it to be to reach as more people uh, uh, as more people as possible and at the same time you know you also have you know greenfield that keeps telling them about the initiation greenfield is an interesting character is uh, yeah. i mean both me and and uh, but, but me and him we went to the same school one one with michael bertio in chicago of all places so you know, <laughs> I, I know chicago quite well been there several times and and michael is is a is a huge trickster himself. And it feels like, I never met Alan Greenfield in person, but um, you know, we, we went to the, to the same places, we, we, we navigated the same streams, if you want. And I can feel a lot of like trickster energy coming from him, uh, which is the agent of change, which is what brings, in many ways, does bring initiation. So maybe that's where you know, the planes slightly start to, um, to blend into each other. I'm definitely curious to see where where we're going with this. If there ever is going to be like you know a third season of Hellier, uh, I know for us, I know as a fact that Greg is working on something, and he, he told me that at some point he has to talk to me about the Star Sapphire because I was the person that you know after I finished the thing, like and and they received you know the Star Sapphire communication, I sent him like I think like a rain thing in May. I was like, no, nope, I can tell you what it is <laughs> because that's something that I've been working on like most of my life, and if you know, it, it, it does make a lot of sense. Um, I haven't spoke with them yet. I don't know if I ever will. I don't know if they want to go there because it's, it's also really like, a, you know, going to those places, it forces you to, to leave your old life behind. And there's no way around. I mean, Lonnie, you, you go into initiation yourself, so you know what it's like, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's a groundbreaking experience. And maybe some people are not ready for that. Maybe some people, especially, you know, as, it be, as Hellier became more and more successful, you have to deal with all the crazies. And there are going to be a lot of crazies that this experience, this phenomenon will attract. Um, imagine all the pizza gators that would say that, oh, you're bringing Satan into the world. Uh, Something that I saw, one meme, like one of those funny memes that I saw that kind of made me think, ah, a bit cringe, that's going around, making the rounds a lot. It's like, have you ever, you guys have seen that um, meme that goes around with the nine Dungeons and Dragons alignments, you know, you know lawful good, neutral good, oh, yeah. how they good. And so you have lawful good Greg, neutral good Dana. And then, and then the evil ones are like David Christie, Terry Wrist, and Pan. And I'm thinking, what? I mean, those are the ones that actually are sending the message. Those are the ones that actually, you know, are trying to communicate something. Yes, possibly they are doing it in a weird way. We, we don't know why they're doing it in a weird way. Muscle, we never know. But why are they evil? So, I mean, like, this kind of, like, the way, like, the mainstream is, or is already, I don't want to, like, the hijacking the message, but kind of. It kind of makes me think uh, it's where are we going with that, you know? So that's it. Well, you've touched on my, uh, my next conversation point. And this is going to be a, a really, really blunt, wide open question. So um, forgive me for it. Um, <laughs> who or what is Terry Wrist? Oh, well then, um, Lonnie, you want to start on this one? <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I'm about 90% leaning towards Terry Wrist is Alan Greenfield. And I'm not sure if that really matters, to be honest. Uh, I know that they put a lot of importance on Terry Wrist because he does come up so much in, you know, as the catalyst of most of this in a lot of ways. Uh, it's just, it was the interview they had with Alan Greenfield that made me start thinking I, I hadn't formed an opinion because I didn't know who Alan Greenfield was before they interviewed him. And I watched Hellier uh, just, you know, Thelema is not my realm. Uh, the, the world of hermetics is the most exposed to hermetics. I really ever got involved is Lon Milo Duquette's work and, you know, Gordon from Rune Soup. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just watched that interview. Now, granted, there's ch large chunks of it missing, but I watched that interview and the way they interviewed him uh, with the eyes of someone who's been a bartender and a bar manager for 20 years, having to manage an environment, keep people safe, be able to read people and their motives. I watched it with the eyes of someone who's worked with well over a thousand people in hypnosis, having to 
figure out what the inner workings of their mind is so I can help them and how to actually read the cues that I get both verbally and non-verbally while I interview them. And if I say 90% because he knows so much, it would fit so well. He has all the right access and knowledge to, to engineer just a spark to see if it catches fire and moves forward. Um, but we have to keep in mind too, this goes, this goes way back further than when Hellier was even started filming. So, you know, this is a, just a theory. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's almost convenient and easy to say it's, it's Alan. So I don't know if Terry wrist, Terry wrist exists somehow, but I don't know if they exist as Terry wrist as Alan Greenfield or as someone else, but I've just, as this has all gone forward, you know, I could have, I could have read, read cosmic trigger when I was a kid and not known it was written by Robert Anton Wilson. It could have just said it was written by a pen name or something like that. And after reading Cosmic Trigger, it opens my mind to all this vast world of possibilities and I follow this trail into my world of sorcery and magic and who I am today as the current point of it. And I can, re I can trace it all back to these kinds of events is it really important that I find Robert Anton Wilson and ask him why he wrote the book or published it, or it ended up in my hands, or is it more important that I chase the mysteries and yeah. find out what gets, uh, gets, I guess, opened up and, and discovered by seeking those mysteries. I, I just think it's more important to seek the mysteries than it is to seek the man. Well, I mean, you 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 touch on the fundamental point. It's more you know it's more important to go on a quest than finish mm -hmm. the quest itself because the quest yeah. is the chance of noses. The quest is what actually you know lets you evolve. Now my take on it, and it's actually in fact one of the first, if not the first, article I ever wrote on my newsletter about Hellier was, you know, for me Terry Rist is. 90% Helen Greenfield, but with a twist. <laughs> and that's very interesting. Uh, the thing, and the twist is that, um, as, I, so as I said before, I know what, despite me not knowing Greenfield directly, never met in real life, very brief uh, contact online, uh, I know what school he went to, okay? And I know what <laughs> kind of, I say, you know, magic is, is, is he must have done. And... So the idea that for me, terrorist is an entity, an intelligence that has been conjured by Greenfield, you know, and uh, I I suggest that could be the the you know the consciousness of the holy guardian angel of 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 Greenfield, or just an entity conjured by Greenfield. Now, what as as I was like looking into that, I tried to contact terrorist myself as a as an entity and something has responded more than once um and through all sorts of synchronicities because as we were saying before this is an hyper sigil things keep reverberating and snowball i ended up discovering who made the terrorist image that's on secret cipher of the UFO, ufo notes in in the book by by greenfield the book that's on hellier there's an image the, with with a person that supposedly is Terry Rist with a long uh, Crowley, a long bunch of other, you know, um, masters of, of the hermetic sciences. Now, the person that made this that image, a very, very early Photoshop job, you know, from 20 years ago, more or less, uh, late 90s, early, early 90s, uh, is this man called Jonathan Sellers that was an associate of uh, Greenfield at the time. It's still active and still is more interested now in uh, esoteric Freemasonry in uh, Hermetica. And it doesn't, doesn't work with, I, I reached out for him, I talked with him, and he was, he, he didn't confirm nor deny, <laughs> let's put it like that, but it definitely showed that he was the one, you know, they, they did that image together in order to almost like channel down, give a route to a magical operation. So for me, it, it's not, there's no confirmation here because as I said, uh, magic, to find proof and confirmation in magic is almost like losing the point. But for me it was like, okay, it's possible to try and contact terrorists 
as an entity. And that's something that I've been working on. I'm not, I'm not ready to fully you know, report on it yet because it's an ongoing, an ongoing job, ongoing work that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm approaching it as a sort of fairy embassy, which is maybe something we can discuss later. Uh, but um, I definitely think that you know, 90% is Greenfield, as in something that comes from Greenfield. And can I see Greenfield like trying to orchestrate these old things, even over years? Yes, I uh, I can see that happening. Um, definitely, I mean, I can see I can see him playing playing a very very long game. So I guess we we both agree on the ninety percent Greenfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I also reserve my right to change my mind at any time. Oh, yeah, new evidence is presented. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, no, no, absolutely. Like I said, yeah. like I said, like for me as well. Like I I'm doing yeah. this this series of works. It, it's promising, <laughs> but I don't have conclusions yet. So. You know, if somebody comes yeah. up and say, you know, hey, you know, I actually, I am a, uh, a Vietnam veteran. They might, I mean, he must be in his 60s now if he's a natural person, 60s or 70s, something. Mm -hmm. If he comes yeah. up and say, hey, I am me. But. I know during all of this quarantine and everything, um, Greg and Dana, through their traveling museum membership, have been uh, heroes of legendary status. They've done live events live events, live investigations, like building, just making sure the community is keeping sane during all the shutdown. They've been wonderful yeah. providing content and helping people uh, over the last eight weeks. And Hellier comes up a lot in those conversations. And I can tell you with a fair degree of certainty, it appears to me, I'm trying to recall if they've actually come out and said it, and I'm not so sure they have, but it certainly appears to me through things that they do in their investigations, things that have come up in SS method sessions, Ganfield experiments, and further things that they've done during these last eight weeks for museum members. I, I, I don't think, and it goes back to Hellier too, I don't think they suspect Greenfield of being Terry. I, I don't think that's an avenue they are going down anymore. But I, I, I think I think you I think yeah. you're, I think you're. I mean I, I I subscribe to the museum as well because you know just 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 support a fantastic endeavor and I agree right. with you like like this comes comes a lot and I I, I don't think they think that anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Again, at the same time, it's also true that they spoke with him for hours and hours and hours. Like when I spoke with Greg those few times, he told me like we had to leave. I don't know, four hours of, of material out because he was constantly, you know, bat mouthing the OTO, as I do all the time myself. So it was like, yeah, we cannot do that. It's like, yeah, I can just I was like, well, you should have done it, but anyway. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah, so I, I, I guess we're both on, on a similar idea here. I, if it's it's easy to forget though, and I think it's important to remember that the emails that ended up being the catalyst for the Hellier series go all the way back to the Who Forted Days and the the alien cave based task force stories that they they put together based on these emails they were getting from David Christie, yeah. and you know the, this thing has had legs for a long time, and it's Hellier's not the first time they went looking into it. They've driven yeah. down there and looked at the area. They you know they've explored this possibility before it well, was something that happened it's like carl was the the magical ingredient that gets added to the mix he's the one that's got all these synchronous things happening to him and he can't ignore them and that's what sparks this new investigation that becomes the hell your series so i don't know did greenfield really like okay, select crazy. out these guys that long ago and think, oh, I'm going to play. Is his divination that good? <laughs> well, <laughs> that it it's going to be a movie. You know, there's something to be had though. Um, I was interviewed by the Penny Royal podcast, um, and uh, which actually is an ongoing thing for the, the people that would live in Somerset, right? And mm -hmm. I mean, speaking with them and doing a little bit of in, um, in like going investigation, if you want. Like that place is weird. <laughs> like that, that, that not not so much like the, the area, like Pike County, like Somerset, Kentucky is weird. Mm -hmm. Like we found out, and it's something maybe when, when I'm not gonna say too much because of course this podcast is coming out at some point and it's their material. But just as a little hint, we found out that there was basically a group of esoteric Freemasons that moved into the area that had some ties with another Freemasonic group here in the UK 
in the uh, in the Isle of Jersey, where there's a Saint Helier Church. So you know, it's like you you start to see like all these connections and thinking. Wow, it's the capital of Jersey, Greenfield. Saint Helier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but Greenfield, Greenfield is one. Greenfield is one that is actually fascinated with all the, Mas the Masonic connections, uh, and it's like, and he's the kind of person that would have gone. He has the time, let's say, the time to just devolve to, to, to orchestrate all of this. I still want to believe, just to use, you know, a, a Fox Mulder a reference, I want to believe that it's more like, it's not just like Greenfield the man, but it's more like whatever Greenfield conjured over the years of being a magician that has been sending messages. Mm -hmm. We still mm -hmm. don't know what kind of messages. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's a hint, again, with the Star Sapphire, what that is which is never touched on Hellier. And I was like, why guys? No, no, no don't, don't, don't end on this one. No, don't do that, please. But. Well, that's my next point, really. Um, and why the star sapphire? You know, and where does the star sapphire go? Where does it lead them? Okay, I guess, I guess I'm going to start on this one. Yes, uh -oh. the Thelemic question. I'm, I'm out. Marco, tag, you're <laughs> in. <laughs> so, the... Of course, when they speak of the start, the fact that the, the, those numbers were actually, you know, could be put in the code, and and I want to say something for that it's obvious to us, but maybe it's not obvious to our listeners. Whenever we speak of the cipher, the secret cipher of the Euphonos, the New Eon English Kabbalah, that cipher that they use on the show, that is one of many. I don't want to say countless, but there are so many ciphers, gematric uh, codes that can be divide, uh, divined by, by using the Book of the Law. Let's say using one makes sense if you just want to use it as a, as a reference, as a map of reality, okay? As we use this one in order to see if there's any connection and we want to go along with that. I think it's important to have that in mind. Now that said, when they, you know, they put the, code, the numbers back in and they receive, okay, it's about the Star Sapphire, it doesn't really make sense unless you read the, uh, the, the Alan Greenfield book, the, the expanded version, uh, which I, I guess um, includes the other book he wrote, which was Secret Rituals of the Man in Black, I think was called, where there's a second terrorist interview. And in this second terrorist interview, they, they terrorist okay. and Greenfield speak about using the orgon energy, that is the energy of sex magic, the, the, the sexual energy, in order to destroy what Michael Bertio, Greenfield's teacher, talk, uh, speak, um, defines as the bad UFO experience. That is, in order to, to have, just to try and synthesize, in order to have good UFO experience, in order to have good communications from the ultra-terrestrial, in order to have to receive the, 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 the proper message, you must um, distill it, synthesize it by the use of the sexual energy in a magical, mystical way. And the Star Sapphire is one ritual that alludes at all the secret operations of Ordo Templariantis, at all the sexual alchemy, alchemical pro processes that are hidden in the Book of the Law. This is as, as simple as I can as I can synthesize it, <laughs> which I realize it's not very simple, and it's also something that you know when I wrote um, maybe I don't know Reddit something like that when I wrote something about you know in fact this also, also almost feels like you know Terry Rist the 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 ultra terrestrial the UFO notes are sending a message to, to say okay this has been received you know by the by the Hellier crew but maybe this next step will be will have to be undertook by people that are, that are actually ready to do this kind of more advanced um, operations. And of course, I was downvoted to hell and say that I was, I didn't know anything and I was trying to steal the thunder and things like that. I was like, okay, I'm out, bye. I mean, that's the effect <laughs> for you, I suppose. <laughs> um, you know, did you get called a noob? at any stage oh well, i mean that's that's the internet right <laughs> yeah straight up <laughs> you never you have to hear anybody on the internet going like I, I never looked at it that way thank you for explaining it thank you for offering yeah, that I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you something i mean it, it wasn't comp all, all bad and people were more like um hmm. re reacting to the idea that 
you know, their heroes, you know, mm. uh, Dana, Greg, would have been, uh, you know, you know, there would have been maybe like a, a guest, a guest, you know, a, a guest show coming. I don't know. Like they, it wouldn't be about them anymore, but about something else. Because of course, people latch upon that. People yeah. want to yeah. to see. I mean, and, and as Alonia said, I mean, they're super likable characters. Yeah, they're, they're characters. People, right. you know, they're great people. So why why not wanting to see more of them? So, but you know, when they when they finish Hellier doing a very like you know the pan invocation, which is nice, but it's also very, very, very neophyte level. If you want, you know, you know, opening the quarters, banishing the elements, and doing a, a nice, a nice invocation. And I mean, um, Lonnie can can confirm this. Like m most people do that in their in their homes to have the guts of going into a cave. Like, like I mean, that's that's fantastic. I mean, that's what ceremonial magic, or even like I would say, like pagan magic, was supposed to be. Go to the place, the spirit, the the, pla the place speaks. The place has power, so you want to go there. So that's that's commendable. But I was thinking, yeah, this is just the beginning, and it's not about the god Pan. Pan is a cipher itself. Pan in in telemic magic is the formula of Nox, the crossing of the abyss. I mean, <laughs> it's it's where you go through the the virtue of sexual magic because in 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 the reaching the climax, you almost annihilate your ego and you cross the abyss. But of course, this is something that you can speak about, and people are like what? Huh? huh? What is that? What is that? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. For myself, watching the invocation of Pan, I thought Greg nailed it hit a grand slam that oh, that was that was some powerful invocation but what i was surprised by and i don't know if this was just because uh, everyone else present wasn't prepared for what might happen or they weren't opening themselves up to the, enough of the energy i'm just saying that you can get a collection of people i've worked with put them in that same cave and have greg do that same invocation and with that same intensity and watch every motherfucker in that cave break out into ecstatic dance mm -hmm. and trance the fuck out. They're not going to stand there looking around for clues. Mm -hmm. They're going to be immersed in the experience. And I thought that's where the direction it would end up going. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, Con Connor's Catholic. <laughs> I was, a, I was, so, I was about so to he's, exactly so <laughs> he, his, and, and, and one of the world's most phenomenal investigators in these things. So I'm sure his eyes are peeled for any clue of something happening. And Tyler's not probably going to jump into something like that. Also investigating. Um, I, I, I can't speak for them. Mm -hmm. I was just such an immensely powerful invocation done so well. Uh, I just thought there was going to be more after that. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Uh, I, mean, it could, it could I would take Greg you. as the invoker anywhere. <laughs> I mean, he, he really, really he, I agree with you. I mean, you really, really, especially because as as he, you see on earlier, he states he never did anything like that before. And then he was like, you know, ch basically channeling Eopan by Crowley. And I was like, well, that's, that's powerful for somebody yeah. who never did anything. So I would say that he definitely got into the spirit. Of, but the point I was trying to make is that that maybe it's very good as a uh, I would if I were to orchestrate a ritual again uh, um, uh, um, along the lines of all they received, I would definitely start with that. But then you know, building up to to a star sapphire like ritual, then you need you need you really need exactly the people that let go that are ready to to let this 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 the spirits to let this energy go through them and embody them because that's when you get the oracle are coming out you know then when you get the messages because again i i i'm gonna bet money on it there's a message that still needs to get out because they're they whatever they are the other they're trying to to, to tell us something um i don't know what it is but i'm pretty sure I really hope that like all, all our efforts will will bring it up because it's it's time to hear it. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I I don't presume to know what the other is trying to say. I sometimes think that they're they you know are very good at dangling things in front of us to make us dance and, and never reveal a message sometimes <laughs> and some unless the message is simply that you should dance you should take that 
you should be take, seeking these mysteries and, and doing these things. The world is weirder and more magical than you think. That's um, a good point, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, in my own work, you know, I don't use circles or things like that very often. Um, I prefer to acknowledge the fact that each and every one of us are a crossroads, that we, we have all these powers and energies and things that flow through us. And once you acknowledge that something happens, it transforms you into the same sort of crossroads that someone might go to to call Hecate or the devil or someone to make those deals. You are that same super powered liminal spot. And it's not because you suddenly are supercharged with power to do something. You are, you're acknowledging and becoming that location that things come to for those sorts of interactions. Um, I would love, I would love to see them conduct a ritual my style <laughs> and, and see what happens because I can do it and have my own experiences, but they're the ones that are immersed in whatever this unfolding is. I know, maybe and we can, and we can none use, of us can insert ourselves into it the way they are. I, you know, maybe we, we can use the, this podcast, like if, if they listen to us and say, hey guys, we, 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 we're ready to offer our expertise in our different you know, relative uh, fields to support the ongoing process. Because I mean, it, it's pretty clear that we're all into it. I mean, at least mm. pretty clear to me, let's put it like that. We're yeah. all into this, like it's, and it's, it's, I felt at first that maybe, you know, it was something that people picked up for a while and then it would die down. I mean, we're, we're almost at June now. It's six months. It's still <laughs> going. It's, it's, still yeah, going. Yeah, it's still going strong. It's still growing. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, so, gents, any final thoughts? Ooh, well, um, as I said, uh, if, if Greg and, and crew are listening, guys, uh, let's all get together when the <laughs> when the the COVID is over, and uh, let's let's have like a, a weekend of magic. <laughs> 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 sounds sounds super creepy, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. Um, I, at first, I'd like to say if you're inspired to take up these sorts of investigations, or even to look into the hell your case yourself. Please, please, please do not go to Somerset, Kentucky or Hellier, Kentucky and begin hunting down and harassing people that you saw on the show. Um, respect their privacy. Understand that if they ended up on the show, they probably signed release statements that, that they are private citizens and they deserve to have that respect given to them. Don't go hunting people down and knocking on doors. Um, secondly, I hope that you found something in watching Hellier or listening to this conversation about Hellier that made you want to go from being curious to taking action magically. Mm -hmm. And you do not have to find the right system. You don't have to study the books of Thelema. You don't have to re understand the entire <laughs> book of the law or the collection of Crowley. You don't have to read uh, six ways by Aiden Walker, like I recommend, you know, like you don't necessarily have to do these things. You just find what resonates with you. If, if you're curious and do something, just work something magically, whatever it is, even if it's a cheap, weird spell kit, just do the thing, turn on that light and enter the realm of mysteries. So we can begin to really open up the world magically again, get these mysteries flowing. I, the, the greatest thing I think Hellier is doing outside of all the details of the case is it is inserting a counter narrative to the rampant materialism yeah. that has infected mm -hmm. the, the minds of the world. And it, it's keeping minds and hearts open to those mysteries that do exist. And perhaps that's exactly what it is that the other is raging against is the dying of those mysteries. Mm -hmm. So if they're doing nothing else, they are certainly doing that. They're countering that, that narrative of materialism and I applaud it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, I really appreciate your time and, um, it was just some great conversation and um, lovely to have you both on the podcast. Uh, it's great. Um, so please let the good people of the interwebs know where they can find you and what you got coming up next. Marco. Go ahead, Marco. <laughs> All right. Um, I am found, um, my website is marcovisconti.org and over there you can find my writings, my 
uh, all the, the details of the workshops that now I do online. And in fact, one is coming up, uh, seminar is coming up in two weeks from now on June the 12th. And it's called Hellier to Heliopolis, whereby I try to pinpoint, um, in case you're curious to know more, where you find all the telemic reference in Hellier. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to present um, a practice that one can do if one wants to explore the Hellier phenomena from a, stand, from a telemic standpoint. Um, and I'm, I'm found online, I have a patron, you know, go to the website and you'll find all the relevant links. Great stuff. And Lonnie. Awesome. Um, my central hub basically online is weirdwebradio.com. Uh, you can find my show and all the episodes that I do on there, of course, and the people that I've interviewed, including yourself. Um, you can get links to my hypnosis site. If you want private hypnosis sessions, I conduct them worldwide, regardless of distance over Skype. Uh, if you're looking for a tarot reading, I'm an international award-winning tarot reader. Same thing, links up to tarot options on there, rune readings as well. Um, other than that, I've got, a, I wish I could tell you more. I just got a book deal with Llewellyn and I've got a, a book coming out. Uh, probably awesome. next year sometime. Uh, it's got a, it's got something to do with some of the things we've discussed today and, and a lot to do with my personal experiments and practices over the last uh, several years. So I'm excited about that. I, I just wish I could tell you more. <laughs> well, I, I, I wish we could hear more, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you will when it's when it's time. Believe perfect, me, perfect. I will. I will spam the world. <laughs> we'll get you back. We'll get you back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, gents, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you both. And, thank you so uh, much, Gary, and thank you, yeah. thank you, Lonnie. It's been a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was great to meet you too, Marco. And thank you for uh, having me on the show. This has been great. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Have thank a good you. evening. Talk Bye. Soon. Bye. Bye. Well, there you go. How about that? Thank you, Lonnie, and thank you, Marco. That was brilliant. I really enjoyed it, and thank you so much for your insights and taking the time out to uh, get together for uh, this show. So, as I said earlier, links to Marco's talk are below, and links to Lonnie's radio show are below. We'll be looking forward to getting Lonnie back for a solo show. He's got some cool things in the pipeline. So just a little bit of housekeeping for me. If you like the show and want to support us and get extra content, um, be sure to subscribe to our Patreon. Um, speaking of which, I'd like to welcome two new Patreons, Ariel Martinez and Robert Wilson. Thank you both for your support. I'm looking forward to having a great conversation with you both about the material we discuss on Spirit Box. That's it from me. Take care and talk soon.